Hey guys, welcome back. It was in fact Solar Fleet who knocked Shadow Cartel out of the tournament. Uh, Solar Fleet, well known throughout the EVE universe. Nice. However, the next match is going to be between End of Life and Templus Calcif. If we look at the teams they brought yesterday, uh, End of Life brought two Nighthawks, two Vultures, a Basilisk, two Raptors, a Griffin, and two Merlins. So an all in Kaldari team, very command ship heavy. We tend to see the Kaldari command ships less than the Mimitar ones. Perhaps we can comment that on that in a moment. But first, let's See what Templars Kalsa brought. They brought a Balgorn, a Damnation, in fact, two Damnations, and a Neros, two Sviples, two Confessors, and two Purifiers. Uh, Jim, why don't you start us off by talking about how the Kaldari command ships compare to the Minmatar ones? Yeah, the Kaldari command ships have some real big uh, issues compared to them. First of all, they don't get a bonus to skirmish links that, mm. in such a very constrained format, are incredibly useful. Um, and whilst they do get a bonus to info links, which can allow you to use your Ewa more effectively, you generally can't make them armor, which kind of negates the effect, basically. Mm. Well, so Rocket X, on the other side, for the uh, Templus Calcif team, we saw the Balgorn so popular this weekend uh, with double damnation. That's quite unusual. Tell us a little bit about the damnation hull and what's it, what it's good at and what it's not so good at. Well, I mean, on TQ, you'll generally see the damnation used in larger fights because it is just purely a huge brick of a tank. Um, it's very, very hard to kill, very difficult to alpha through. Um, mm -hmm. So you tend to see them in large fleet fights, normally flown by FCs. Um, in a tournament, like we were saying earlier, the EOS tends to be favourable. Um, the slot layout and, and the fitting on it gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of fitting links. Um, I'm curious to see what they're doing with these damnations. It is possible that they've got links on both of them and that they've tried to fit them for damage or to provide some form of utility with the mid slots. Um, it's not uncommon to see E-War on the mid slots of, uh, of command ships in tournaments. Um, so it is highly likely that that's what they've done. But I don't really think that they're going to add a lot in terms of damage. Um, despite the fact they have a couple of battleships on the team, I'd be sceptical as to whether they're going to have enough punch to get through um, the opposing team. Well, uh, we are now going to go over to the casters for this match between End of Life and Tempest Calcif, so let's go watch that game. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Elimination Round, Day 2 of Alliance 114. I am Elise Randolph, joined by Ryload, Reload, whatever. I call him Ryload, his name's actually Reload. But we've got, um, Brothers in Arms, nope. We've got <laughs> Temple Calcifs. Uh, versus in a very End of Life. Strange, yeah, versus End of Life, in a very, uh, interesting setup with, uh, Ocker Navy issues, supported by Typhoon Fleet issues, and some Blackbird cores with, uh, Frigate Lodging in the form of Beacons. Uh, Relo, tell me about the uh, the other team. Well, uh, End of Life have brought like a, I guess a semi-standard uh, shield core with dual Slepner Claymore with Bassi. Pretty interesting to uh, slip a Cyclone in there, so that's the, I think that's the first Cyclone we've seen in the tournament. Uh, supported with a standard two Sveeple and a Bomber. And they've also brought Breaches as well, so... Pretty interesting uh, support wing, and as well as a cyclone, it'll be pretty interesting to see what they'll uh, what they'll do against this uh, TF this pretty standard TFI core. But Navy augurs are renowned to be extremely tanky. So I was going to ask you about that. Do you think the Navy augurs are just going to be like durable, durable tackle? Is that what their role is here? Um, they only have three mids, so I'm not really confident in their tackling abilities they might have a scram maybe a web uh, i do see they are actually pulse fit so with the priority skin so pulse fit so they are going to be brawling so they do have a lot of armor hp so they could be rocking pulses with maybe two medium newts and a cap booster maybe so yeah do you they think we'll see a polarized navy auger setup coming from these guys it's mm -hmm. a kind of popular niche setup on tq 
uh, the, the Navy Augur does get a really strange bonus that most ships do not get with just raw raw hit points. Um, I don't think they'll bring Polarized, uh, just because like Polarized in general is a really super all-in and uh, not really worth it on AT, because you need the tank, basically. Because uh, they do have the Deacons and the Astarte for the links as well, so if they were going to bring uh, Polarized, just go away with the links and just go with Blasters. Well, they are out front. We'll see if they act as a screen from this uh, end of life team who are rushing in right They're now. They're actually rushing in. Are these AC Slepners? Let's find out. They are, in fact, auto cannon Slepners. Yeah, they are brawling in. They are AC Slep. So, this is a Mimitar rush setup versus the Typhoon Core. Nice. Let's see what these Navy Augers do if they can screen off any of these Slepners. If they can catch these Slepners and hold them off for a little while, they will be good to go. But these Typhoon Fleet issues are just sitting right in the middle of the arena. It looks like End of Life is going for a Deacon first. I mean, it's or at a... least there's Fipples are and yeah, the Breachers. Yeah. It'll be pretty interesting if the Black Wiz can actually get the jams off the, uh, off the Sweeples and the Bassy. He is trying to get the Bassy now. Scram Grappler on the Slepner. Oh, so... yeah, the Slepner has been tackled by Both one of these three been... Typhoons. Both Slepts have been tackled, yeah. But this is exactly where they want to be. It's not like they got screened off or anything. They just want to, uh, they just want to be inside owning face. Oh yeah, definitely. They've actually been untackled, so they actually probably like coasted out of the tier five range of their tackle, and uh, they're just rush. They're just going straight rushing. They are trying to kill these deacons, but they seem to be repping just fine. And the Bassy oh, actually got Lord. caught. The Bassy just got grappled. The Bassy just got grappled by the end of life team. He was way too close. Yeah, some, way for too some close. Reason. He's muted now as well. Oh my god, both teams going for the Lodgy of one another, but if Temple Calcifs can kill the end of life uh, Lodgy, that'll be a huge, huge boon to them. 15 points for a Basilisk, only 10 points for this thing, and uh, one Breacher, breacher just goes down well, yeah. on the backside there. Um, so th it, the question is, if this Bassy can survive long enough for for them to kill the two Deacons and Blackbird, which seems to be taking damage now, this seems to be uh, turning off the Deacons and going for the much weaker Blackbird, and it seems to be working, trying to get rid of the control off the uh, Basilisk. Of the That's end of one life. Blackbird down. There's one Blackbird by, uh, end of life. Good target on that. But the Basilisk is out of ASV charges. He's going to go down yep, he's to these down. Fleet Typhoons. Um, oh. I mean, I don't think it's a worthy trade for a Blackbird and a Bassi. I think Templis have definitely got the upper hand on that trade. And their Deacons are still alive as well. If the Deacons are still alive and kicking, they do need to be close to the action to save. But these ships all have a really good buffer. Uh, end of life going for that last blackbird. Really need uh, pretty hair to die there. Yep. It looks like the uh, and, uh, Templars are actually going to go for the support of end of life. That's a good choice. Trying to kill the uh, high DPS, low EHP setup. Hound now is going to go die soon. Sweeples are also jammed. And the slept now. It is also tackled. So but these Augur Navy issues are the ones that are going around ravaging the support wing. It's really funny to see. <laughs> Don't yeah. see like confessors or sviffles doing this work, but nope, Augur Navy issue, just this big slow cruiser running around uh, tackling hounds and breachers. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how these Navy Augurs, which are not very fast, I see one going almost 1.5k when these breachers, hounds, and sweeples just go almost twice as, th twice as fast as that. Um, maybe they might be cutting off or they're just not paying attention. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's it not something like... you see, you yeah, expect, yeah, right? See, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it looks like... fast. Yeah, this Breacher is taking a little bit of damage, and so is a Sviple from these Navy Augers. And the um, the main damage from the Temple Calcif team is going on to General Vaycott's Slepnir. Uh, you yep. can see this Slepnir is ASB charging, so he's going to mm -hmm. tank for a little while at least. He's gone through one or two charges, and it looks like the Temple Calcif team is on reload right now. Oh yeah, and the yeah, swiveled down on the end of life side, but if I, if I actually zoomed in on one of the deacons and holy moly, so many Harmer rep bots, I, I assume like every single person on the Tempest Calcif side actually has rep bots in their drone bay. They start I have drone blade, feet size, soon have drone bay, because right now their de that one of their deacons is just surrounded by loads of rep bots, so I'm not surprised that it's tanking so easily. Yeah, and maybe that's uh, that's one of the choices for the Navy Augur as well. It does give three small drones, so three little light rep bots on a Deacon. The Deacon has an incredibly tiny signature, especially with, um, I'm sure this is starting to running like, links yeah. for it as well. So these ships are hard to tackle. If you do not have webs and painters, you're not going to be getting good tackles on this. So the, even the small drones offer a lot of rep power for these guys. Yeah, and uh, this is a, a very much a traditional rush versus the Typhoon core, and uh, 
unfortunately the rush setter just didn't really work out they tried to go for a deacon but it just it just like survived just from the sheer amount of rep bots what the uh end of life support should be doing especially the sweeper should just kill rep bots that would have probably been its best bet try to get rid of those rep bots because uh, the bassy just uh, only has a certain amount of time before it's gonna die it doesn't have any sustain because of obviously xlasb yeah we were just mentioning in the previous match how important it is for the support wings to to kill these rep bots and that's what we see a, a lot of the higher tier teams doing because they know how big of a threat these little rep bots can be they, they seem innocuous, one or two of them, but when you've got a swarm of them, they do so much work, as End of Life just had to witness firsthand. And they can't kill Red Bots anymore because their Swipple's dead. Yeah, it looks like it's End of Life, uh, Slepners, and Claymore versus almost the entirety of the Templars team. So it's just End of Life is just going to get cleaned up by Kaldari right now. TFI taking some damage, but he's going to get wrapped by the Deacons just fine. The Blackbirds look like they served their purpose. They soaked up a lot of damage and bought oh, yeah. the Temple Calcif team a lot of time to position themselves well. These Navy Augers and One Confessor were able to do quite a bit of work uh, winning the support war single-handedly. Well, I guess tri-handedly. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty surprised that those Blackbirds actually took a hell of a long time to die, despite being not really an armor tanking ship. Uh, it only has three lows, so... I'm really surprised how two Sletners, Claymores, Feeples, and a Cyclone managed to, like, not even almost break a Blackbird, so... Maybe they weren't on, all on top of it, maybe they were actually getting screened by the uh, Ogre Navy issues and the TFIs. Well, good job for Temple Calcif. They will continue on in the Alliance Tournament. We will see them later on, and End of Life will be eliminated. They are out of Alliance Tournament 14. I'm sure there can be some really great puns that CCV Logic Bro will be able to make about that one. Oh, yeah. But for now, I'm Elise Randolph and Reload, sending you back to the studio with Apophne and the boys, and also a really ridiculous hat. Fifteen seconds to make a cool AT ad. It's got to have dank content. Overused MLG man. And MLG Daniel wait. No profanity. How am I supposed to make an AT ad without saying fu- Hey guys, welcome back to day two of Alliance Tournament 14 with Jintan, Rocket X, and myself, Apothne. We just saw a great match there between Templus Calcif and End of Life. End of Life's Mimitar Commandships not being enough to break the battleship core of Templus. Now, Jintan, we saw in that match Navy Augurs, which I personally think are a fantastic little ship. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, the Navy Augurs get a uh, similar bonus to that of the Damnation we talked about earlier, getting a bonus to overall armor hit points. Mm. And this means that you can fit an incredibly large amount of buffer on them without having to sacrifice too many low slots for it, letting you fit a bit more damage and also not constraining your fitting too heavily, as obviously they have a bonus to their guns, letting them only fit three. That gives you plenty of room to fit things in your highs and mids for control. So you can fit newts, you can fit cap boosters, you can fit remote sensor boosters for your logistics. And all of that bundles together into a nice little package that for only nine points is quite a steal. And they're surprisingly fast as well. Now Rocket, in that match, we saw triple command ship going up against a battleship core there. Obviously in this case, the command ship's lost. Do you have a preference for seeing command ship cores versus battleship cores? How do you think the two compare? I'd rather go, to be honest, with battleships. Um, command ships kind of a halfway between the problems of a cruiser where you have less DPS um, and you can't apply it that well in terms of range unless you go with, obviously, artilleries in, in the case of Slipners. Um, battleships, you're not going to have that problem. You're going to be able mm. to sit where you are. You have a little mobility uh, and you can punch out a lot of damage to range. I know we, we've discussed before, before this match, actually, that um, we, we, we doubted whether 
um, the command ships would have the, the DPS and the punching power to get through the battleships of, of an opposing team, and in this case it turned out to be true. Seeing uh, the return of logistics frigates as well, Jin, they're proving to be very popular this tournament. I really quite like seeing that we do have this very much uh, switch up in what support people bring. Previous alliance tournaments were where you had your T2 logistics, you had your command ship, and then you added things to that comp. Mm -hmm. Whereas now it's much more fluid. Are there any archetypes that you've seen emerging that you're a big fan of, particularly? Uh, as far as archetypes, we've seen a kind of resurgence of ECM. And that's kind of weird. We were seeing a lot of ECM bans earlier on in the tournament. Mm. In fact, we think that the Kitsune and the Blackbird were used very interchangeably to mm. kind of keep that down. But now we've gotten later in the tournament, people have needed to ban out other things like the Aneros and um, more notably some support things like the um, or ugh, rogue composition, basically. Uh, ships, things like the Megathorn Navy issue, that can defeat one particular setup very, very well, but aren't good against anything else. So, with that match done, we are going to bring you the next match, which is going to be Galaxy Spiritus versus Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork. We'll have a few things to say about that after these messages. Oh, no.